We hope to have been out of this business by now. The Department of Justice, we've been prosecuting these cases for about 20 years now. And yet year after year after year after year, we continue to get criminal cases referred to us by the Coast Guard. From my experience, the most common form of cheating is uh, what we call a magic pipe. A magic pipe could be a hose, it could be a pipe, it could be a painted pipe. That will transport oil directly from, say, a holding tank or a bilge, right around the oily water separating equipment, right into the ocean. That magic item that we find that's, uh-huh, we gotcha. This is what's called a magic pipe. That is a term of art that somehow has arisen in the industry. And I think the reason, originally, at least I've been told, is because the oil magically disappears. In any criminal enterprise, somebody who's breaking the law is doing math. It's a calculation, right? Chance I'm going to get caught, chance I'm not going to get caught. People are still making the calculation that this crime is sometimes worth it. In environmental crimes cases, we don't have to prove motive. Don't have to prove why somebody did it. But it is what every juror and every judge wants to know. From my experience, the motivation out there uh, to pump oil in the water um, comes from greed. It's always about money. Follow the money. The United States is the only country that has a whistleblower award. On a ship, it's a small space, and people know what's taking place in that space. Fabrication of pipe connected to overboard as per instruction of first engineer. The OSG case began with a foreign referral. Canada suspected that this ship was dumping, and they were right. But in our investigation, one ship led to another ship, to another ship. And 12 OSG ships were found to be involved in illegal conduct. To have a company this large, a publicly traded company, a company headquartered in the United States of America, engaged in this type of criminal conduct was shocking to us. Once the investigation began, we interviewed crew members on the ship. And one of those crew members came forward and he had tucked underneath his arm a little black notebook. He was the fitter of the ship and he was asked to build a bypass system. He was so angry about having to make the pipe, he recorded every time that they dumped overboard. Before we left in Port of Boston, around 4 to 5 p.m., I started pumping out the slop from the tank in which the said action is against Marple. And he received over $400,000 in the case. This was a case that resulted in a $37 million penalty. We certainly hope we are sending a message to mariners and to the industry that this crime is taken very seriously in the United States. If you like prison, go ahead and dump oil in the water. If you don't like prison, don't do it. I think what this shows is that it's a small world out there. If you're dumping on the high seas, if you're dumping in another country's waters, there are ways for us to find out. At the same time, we're prosecuting only the tip of the iceberg, only the tip. The problem is greater than we know, and we know it's a great big problem. We may think we're the most important link, but in fact, we're only one link in a very large, interconnected ecosystem. If the ecosystems around us that we care about are going to survive in this world, we have to start stopping the things that we can stop. Dumping a little bit of oil in the ocean may not seem like much to them, but when all the ships are dumping a little bit of oil, it adds up. And we need to stop that. Help us to prosecute these cases. Help us to stop this crime. 
help us to protect the world's oceans.